This video is going to outline my process that I've discovered over the years of trying to digitize analog tapes to video that I could edit. Now, th now this video is going to be a little more involved with some gear that unless you're a video editor or a producer of some kind, you want to do documentaries or you're an archivist for a library or something like that, some kind of nonprofit organization that's taking uh, archives, that kind of stuff, um, then this could be for you. But if you're just a regular person that has some old tapes from your family's collection that you want to digitize, I'll do a very brief overview because I've already done videos of how to do these digitizing on a budget. So I will briefly cover that in this video, but I'm really going to focus on this. I think I what I think is the highest quality you can get with different frame rates for under, I would say a thousand to $1,200. Now, if that already seems way too expensive for you, then what I'm going to talk about in the bulk of this video, it's not for you. This again is for video editors or post-production people that need to archive for a long term, have the, the highest quality possible from analog video, or you're editing a documentary or you're editing a film that uses analog video that you need to convert to digital. That's who this is for. But briefly, if you're just somebody that wants to capture some VHS tapes or analog tapes, what I recommend two products. One product is one of these analog to USB devices. There's many different kinds. I'll link however many of these products I can find that are available uh, below. But this is just one of them that I use. So you take, you obviously need a camera or a VHS player, but you get one of those, you plug all that in here, you plug this into your computer. If you have a Mac, you're gonna need an adapter. And then using either QuickTime or OBS or another software, you can record straight to your computer and digitize it. Another way to do that, if you don't wanna go into your computer, is to buy something like this. This is a clear click. I've done reviews of this before. This is this is a version two or 3.0, generation three. And then this one has a micro SD card and you plug in from your VHS player or camera. Here are some inputs here. There's S video, a composite. This HDMI is an out, it's not an in. And then it records this micro SD card. It records it to a highly compressed H.264, which is good for if you have um, not so great analog video. And then from this SD card, you can plug it into your computer and save it that way, or just save everything on your card, all, all those memories. Uh, one thing, if you have a Mac, is that you need to format the card in your Mac before you put it in here. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to read the video files. This is already um, formatted for PCs, not for Macs. So you gotta format the card before you put it in. And But this is good, I've used this and I highly recommend a clear click or this. If you just want to capture something, no fuss. These are relatively cheap. This one's the cheapest, and you get your memories. The next level above that is to use an up converter. An up converter is something like this. This is not that, not that expensive. This is like a, you can find this for under 20 bucks, maybe even like $12. This is just one of many different kinds. You plug whatever you need to do in here first, your, your analog, and then it outputs HDMI. This converts it to a digital signal. And here you can have 720 or, or 1080, your choice. I don't know why you would want 720, do 1080. You need to power this externally with USB power. It comes with those cables, you plug that in, and then you get your HDMI out into your computer and when you're using HDMI, you can no longer have one of these things. So you're going to instead need one of these things. This is a Camlink 4K. There's other versions that you can do, other models that takes HDMI and converts it to USB. This is the one I trust from Elgato. I've been using this forever. And I'll go out from there, in from here, into your computer and capture. By doing it this way, you're no longer capturing standard definition. This up converts it to HD. And then you capture it HD with either QuickTime or whatever software you have in your computer. If you wanna maintain 
the four by three aspect ratio because all of these analog cameras, they didn't do 16 by nine. They did four by three, which is more of like a square shape. This one, once it scales it to 1080, it stretches out the four by three. And then in editing or whatever software you use, you need to uh, format it back to the right aspect ratio. Otherwise, everyone's going to look, you know, spread out. One of it, there's a device that does that though. And that's this. This is the same thing, but these ones allow you to do four by three or 16 by nine. I didn't even know this existed until for, <laughs> I was just looking at gamers, retro gamers. If you're a retro gamer, you already know this stuff. If you have an old Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, it has analog, you plug it in there and you want to you wanna watch it on your TV, you want to play the game on your big screen HDTV, so you have your HDMI into your HDMI TV, and uh, but it's all spread out. And that, you just hit this button right here, hit that, and then now it goes four by three. So you're playing your video games on your 16 by nine TV, but it's four by three, the correct aspect ratio of the game itself. So I found this from gamers, but this could be used for digitizing analog. So you hit that, and then these are the same thing. It's just that because this has more features, this four by three feature, it costs more. So this was about $30, $35. And there's other, other brands, but that's this one that works for me. If you're looking for something else like this, just make sure in the description of the product that it says four by three. You hit the switch and it can do four by three. So when it sends out the HD, it sends it four by three. It goes into your cam link and it's four by three. Even though the file itself is 16 by nine, you'll get the four by three aspect ratio. So that's the next level up. If you have mini DV, mini DV is already digital. This is an analog. So to, to digitize something like this, you have to get a camcorder or a deck, a video deck, but those decks are expensive. On eBay right now, they're upwards from 600 to $1,500. It's cheaper just to get a mini DV camcorder. And most of these mini DV camcorders have a fire wire. That's a fire wire. It converts the tape into a digital signal that can go into your cam, uh, your computer. The way you get into your computer is you get your tape, put it in a camera cord. Like this is the best one. It's, it's really expensive. If you try to find this online, this was, I've had this for, when I bought this originally, I just, I was going to hold on to it cause I could always use this as a deck. So firewire, then you need the cables. I have a Mac, so I need a bunch of, not a bunch, but I need two different converter adapters. So this is, this goes from the camera to out there and then I need this dongle here. Oh, this is, what the heck? I got the wrong one. <laughs> I have one that is Firewire 800. So this is just a Cat5. So it's that to there and then most of these, there is no Firewire 800 to USB-C, Thunderbolt. There's there, there, That adapter doesn't exist and if it does exist, please let me know about it because this could save me an additional connection here. But in there and then, uh, the, the Thunderbolt 2 into Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt th uh, 3 and 4, and then that goes into your computer, and then you could turn on. What I recommend using if you're a Mac user is just use Final Cut 10 or, or even iMovie, um, and it can capture it pretty easily, and that's how you do it that way. If you have Hi8, here's a Hi8. This is what a Hi8 tape looked like. It says Hi8. If it's digital, you can get a camera like this, which is a Digital 8. Digital 8 accepts both analog and the digital tapes. They they're, look the same. Put it in here. And this one also has a Firewire. Firewire right there. And you just got to find one of these cameras that if you're looking online for it on eBay or wherever you, Facebook Marketplace, just make sure it has a Firewire. And then you could digitize your tapes that way. Otherwise... You're going to get your old school Hi8 camera. And these ones have no Firewire because this was before it was digital. But they do have their analog outputs, which is, you know, the red, red, uh, or yellow, white, and red. This one just has a yellow. Some of them have S video. You have to pay attention to which ones they have. Make I would just look at if they have the yellow, white, and red. And then you digitize it that way using the method I'm going to show now. 
I don't have the VHS player in this video, but I'll show it once I do the actual digitizing. Uh, you just got to find a good player because some players could, uh, they're not all created equal. So you might have to go through several of them if you haven't inherited one from family members. But this video, this whole process covers the Hi8 or VHS. Hi8, you would do this whole process with a camcorder or a deck if you had deck. And then uh, VHS, you need a VHS player. You can capture really high quality if you did the this method and then you just go straight into your QuickTime uh, or, or the cam link. And that does, uh, you can capture ProRes 422, 10-bit, which is great from, a, from just your software that comes with the Mac. But the problem and the reason why this, the, the process that I'm going to outline right now is frame rate conversion. When you're capturing with all of those other devices that I just showed, it does not change frame rate or interlacing. So this could be a huge problem when capturing for editing purposes or for archival because that could just have a lot of artifacts or things on the video that you don't want to um, have, preserve. And also, a lot of documentaries are 23.98 or they're uh, 30p, whereas the analog was 60i interlaced on a lot of those uh, tapes. So this is the only way or the best way and cheapest way that you could upconvert standard definition to HD and also change the frame rate to a progressive 23.98 or a 29.97 frame rate that matches the frame rate of your whatever the uh, modern day, whatever you're using to, to edit your film, your, your short film, whatever, your documentary. This is the way to do it. Okay, so out of all of these pieces of gear I have on this table right now, the one that might be hard to find and also the most expensive is this device right here. This is a time-based corrector. I mentioned this in another video that I made. And a time-based corrector fixes a lot of the glitches that analog players uh, you'll see on a TV or when you're digitizing. Or sometimes you'll play a VHS tape and it'll, it'll black out every few seconds and then it'll come back on the picture. And that's all due to the time base of the tape. I don't know the exact engineering science of this, all I know is that whenever I have an analog tape that's giving me a bunch of glitches or it's not playing back right or there's a lot of tracking issues, the time-based corrector fixes all of that. It's like magic. The problem is that the people don't sell this anymore. This is hard to find um, from what I've, to I'm, I've been told and from uh, what I've looked at myself. This one only does the video doesn't do audio because it's time based is really just for the picture not for the audio. You can bypass all that by with this. I'll, I'll demonstrate that first. But this is kind of essential when you're dealing with a lot of archiving or a lot of digitizing. Uh, the, the tapes, they deteriorate. The players are, aren't, they're, they're questionable. They're all dodgy depending on where you get it. And you got to clean it out and all that stuff. This solves a lot of problems. You just got to find it at a good price. When I bought this, I bought this over a decade ago because I was, I've been doing, that's how long I've been doing stuff like this. I got this for, I think, uh, 50 bucks or something, like 100 bucks maybe. Um, now there, I've heard this goes over $1,000 or 800 to 1,000 just for this, what used to cost under 100 bucks. Uh, so that's bad. And then there's other models out there, but this is the one I've had forever. And now that I know that it's, this is like seven hundred to a to a fifteen hundred dollars. I'm I'm gonna keep this. Uh, so what you do is you go from your VHS player or your camera into this first, and then here's the rest of the daisy chain. So you go into here. Then you need these two products right here. They're both from Black Magic, and these are relatively cheap. This one was about a hundred and. Uh, they're both under three hundred dollars. I think they're one of them's like two seventy, another one's like one hundred and sixty or something like that. Uh, there are other products that you can get, but these were the cheapest uh, quality 
that I could find. And they're readily, they're very much available. You, you can probably even go on eBay and find these used. I bought these used. Uh, so I bought both of these used and it was under $300. And if that's a lot of money to you, then this whole video is not for you. Like if you're an editor, you'll know that that's actually a big value. So what, what you have to do is this converts the analog to SD to a digital signal. And this one up converts it, it up it and changes the frame rate. If you look on the back here, here's how you make the setting changes and it's all done with dip switches right there. And you, 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 you manually do these switches and then it could make whatever you want to uh, have on the output. Uh, one of the things that I had to get in addition to just getting these two converters are these adapters. So these are the inputs for the SD or analog, but the analog you need, uh, it's B and C. Uh, BNC is not, I mean, it used to be very common, but it's not natural for what you can find on, you know, for video products these days for anal like analog, this is RCA analog. So you, you have to buy these adapters. I bought these adapters and this allowed me to, to plug in the yellow boom in there. And then you need these two. These are all for video and these two are for the audio. This one is left. This one is right. And then you just need these RCA to quarter inch adapters, plug it there. So then eventually what you're going to do is you're going to have it, the red and white, red on this side, white here. But this one, that's because this is coming out of your VHS player. This one needs to go into the time-based corrector first. And then from the time-based corrector input, you need to come out of the time-based corrector. And then this is now a good the the clean signal that you go into the analog to SD. Uh, that looks like a mess, and it is, but that's because I don't have the cables are it's the three cables are really close together. So you do that. That is your first chain. Now this is going to go to your up converter. The way that this works is that on the back you have all of these options of what kind of frame rate, NTSC, PAL, whatever settings, whatever output you want that's HD, you do it back here. And this shows you a pattern of on off for your dip switches. Those switches are right here. So whatever, let's say, because what I'm doing is 1080p at 23.98. That's what I want. I want to convert all of my video in, in whatever frame rate and size it is. And I want to make sure it's all the same. 1080p 23.98 so i gotta align those switches right here in in that pattern and now whatever that comes in is going to output that into into that frame rate and uh resolution so i go from here to here this is only sdi so oh, eh, sorry <laughs> this is sdi and hdmi but out here is only sdi so i go sdi to sdi and i just need an sdi to sdi cable not all SDI cables are created equal, so make sure that it's the one that can do uh, 3G SDI. I just make sure it does that that uh, uh, kind of a cable. And that covers all my bases. Th these two, they're the same output. They're, they just do dual outputs. Okay, so there's that chain. And then after I do all the dip switches and all that stuff, I have an option of, of doing SDI again or HDMI. HDMI is easier, more common. The output is exactly the same, whether you do SDI or HDMI. The audio is also embedded in the SDI or, or HDMI. So don't worry about the audio. The audio will also go filter all the way through. And now your final capture uh, method is if you want to do just uh, the highest quality capture and you don't want to, you already have like a recorder like this. This is an Atomos Ninja. This takes HDMI and then it can capture it at, at whatever is coming in. So, and it, it captures it at the highest codec. So it's ProRes 422HQ. I think you can, that's the highest I would re, uh, capture things at, ProRes 422HQ. And um, all of this maintains the scale as well. So just because it upconverts it, it doesn't s uh, uh, squeeze it. 
it 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 captures it in four by three. That's the way it the, it outputs. So you plug this into here, and as soon as you plug it into here, it automatically reads the the frame rate and and resolution that this is coming out of. And then you hit record here, and I'll demonstrate I'll demonstrate this part of the process later. But you would do it there, and then you hit record there, and then here it's saved on this SSD. Plug this into your computer, and then you'll have ProRes four two two HQ at 1080, 23.98. The other thing you can do, which is what I am gonna do mostly, is go from HDMI to my cam link, and then from the cam link, I gotta go into my computer, so I have this dongle. I make sure it's 3.0, boom. And then this goes into my computer, my Mac, and then I open up my software of choice, which I use QuickTime. The regular QuickTime player that ships with every Mac. I, well, I play the VHS player or the, the, the camcorder, and I capture in real time. You, when, you, when you're doing analog, it, you have to capture it in real time. And by doing it this way, this whole chain that I'm just showing you right here, this chain is going to give you, as a video editor or an archivist, the highest quality uh, digitized video at the frame rate of your choice. If you want to do 4K, that's a whole other story. There are other devices that do, that does do 4K, but now you're looking at 1,000, 2,000, something like that. And um, when it comes to this part of the product, this is still going to cost you money. The, the time-based corrector is still going to be uh, something hard to find and um, maybe expensive. But then to go up to 4K, they have... 4K, but th that's where you're going, like $600, that kind of stuff. You might be asking yourself, well, if I already have this device, this thing right here, wh what do I need this for? What do I need this analog to SD converter? Or what do I need this for? Can't I skip all of this and just use this? You can, but the quality of HD is not the same as this. This is more pure. You, the resolution is going to be the same technically, but the image quality isn't going to be as crisp, as, as warm, and you're not going to be able to do the frame rate control. There's no frame rate options when you do it this way. You can only get the frame rate that's coming into everything. You can't change the frame rate. You need this thing. So then you're going to ask yourself, oh, okay, well, in that case, what if I don't need this stuff? Can I just go from the camera, from the uh, VHS into this thing, HDMI into this thing, so that way I can... Uh, I don't need this anymore, and I could I could just have the frame rate conversion. Yes, you can do it that way too. But it, from my opinion, just looking at the image, I've done a side by side, and it works. If you want to save a few bucks, you don't have to get this. You could do it this way. But my eyes, the quality wasn't as good as just using this. So it is possible you can do it that way. But when it comes to the quality the end result, I found that this is the best, cheapest way to do it. It's recording. This is ProRes uh, 422HQ. And you can see it's working here. I'm going to stop this. Stop the tape. Then now I'm going to unplug there, turn this off. So that's if you want the absolute highest quality uh, and, and you have a Atomos Ninja you can uh, record to the SSD here. When you plug that in, it reads just like a hard drive. And then it's up here. I'm gonna just drag and drop. So I'm gonna open this up. And this is what was just recorded right here. And it comes with, it, it records sound too. Yeah, I don't know if you, you heard that, but the sound, sound works too. And if you look here, this is full HD ProRes 422, 10-bit, or, or I think it's actually 12-bit, and it's 23.98. Uh, you can see here it's progressive. There's no interlacing. I'm going frame by frame. You don't see any interlaced frames at least not on, on, on this phone, right? You, you can't see it, cannot see it. And then if you go, when I go into the, the specs here, so you can see here, it is 
encoded at 23.98. That's the data rate, 140 megabits, 16 by 9. And it's uh, right there, ProRes 422HQ. 24-bit uh, audio, linear PCM, 48 uh, hertz. This is good quality. All right, that was capturing it on the Ninja, the Atomos Ninja. Now I'm going to capture it directly into the computer. My dongle, this is the Camlink HDMI out of the up converter. Then plug that in. Then go into my MacBook Air. Now as I go into my MacBook Air, I'm just going to open up QuickTime. And I'm going to go to File, New Movie, New Movie. And once I go to the new movie here, down here, I make sure that I'm connecting to the cam link. Cam link for audio and for video. Okay, now it's going from the VHS all through this stuff going into the computer. I'm going to hit record. It's recording right now at the maximum quality, which is ProRes 422. So this is being recorded right now. It's capturing it in real time, audio and video. All with QuickTime. That's built in to most of these Macs, the, you know, if you, the, the OS, if you have a modern Mac OS, you have QuickTime and it's recording. I had to do a few settings changes, but once you do that, I'm good. It's recording. I'm going to stop the recording and then stop the tape. And then I'm just going to save this and it does look like it's 23.98 progressive, no interlace frames. No crazy VHS tracking or anything like that works. And just to prove that this is 23.98, I'm going to go into the inspector here. And there you go. The encoded frame rate is 23.98. The data rate is 124 megabits. And it's ProRes 422, which if you're going directly into uh, QuickTime, that's the highest it can go. But it's 1920 by 1080. That's a really high data rate. This is the best quality you can get for this budget level.